Hello, everyone out there. Look, I have the cast and the director fly away with me. So they're going to spend an hour with us chatting, and we're going to introduce everyone. Hello, I'm Roxanne. Most of you know who I am, and I'm from Everything About Hallmark. And we're going to start. Marita, let's start with you since you're the director. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I'm, I'm the director of uh, Bark, a.k.a originally known as Bark. Uh, actually, the original name was Chirp, and then it was Bark, and now it's Fly Away With Me. Um, and I think it's my 18th um, Hallmark movie. Wow. Uh, and I'm very happy to be on this particular one because there's there's so much richness to it, and there's so much um, beauty to uh, to r the, r the repeat of working with some of my favorite people in the world. Um, albeit Joseph is new to me, uh, but everyone else I've worked with before uh, so it, it's a very, very special and unique movie. So I, I, I hope you enjoy it. And I turn it over to the cast. How about you, Paul? Say a little bit about yourself. Uh, hello. Uh, yes, I'm so excited to work with Marita again. And I worked with Catherine, although it's funny. Catherine, Melinda, and I did the opposite. I was on a thing with Melinda. I never saw her. this movie. I didn't see Catherine. But anyways, it's so great. <laughs> Natalie and Peter and Joseph are all my new favorite people. Tim's my... <laughs> sideways favorite person we don't know what's going on with him but this, this, maybe this will become like you know uh, uh internet sensation we're gonna blow up the internet like kim kardashian here uh but i'm a canadian and some people know me as the spokesperson for a company called canadian tire so i get called gary a lot which is fine um but this is a great movie it's tons of fun and i have a story i want to tell you later roxanne well, you okay you is it one you can share or one for the studio like no, it's you know you can I can share it I can oh, share. Oh, wonderful! It. I love it. So poor Tim. Listen, Tim should stay on even sideways because he is the voice of Gil, and that is a bird who does silly things. So just stay, <laughs> stay, Tim. That way, you'll be fine. Hi, Natalie. Hi there, uh, Roxanne. Thanks for doing this, and it's so nice yeah. to see everyone. Um, I worked with many of you before, Marita. This is our second movie together. We did Fit for a Prince, and I fell in love with her. Um, she has such a great eye and she sets a sets, set, uh, sets such a good tone on set. And I think that's very telling that we're all here together as a group and a cast. We all support, support each other. Um, this is a great film. And um, I don't know what number Hallmark movie this is for me, but um, I, I don't know. But I, I should think about that. But I had a great time and um, I play the role of Angie. And she's a very fun, loving character. And I'm sure everyone's going to love it. She is. She's cute. She has some cute clothes, too. Did she you does. Did you keep any? No? Oh, absolutely. I did. <laughs> nice, nice. Hi, Melinda. Hi. So excited to be here with everybody. Um, my name is Melinda. In the film, I play Janine. Um, and as you'll see, she is... Um, actually quite opposite to me in real life. She does not like pets. <laughs> so um, you'll see, you know, her her relationship with Natalie and Peter's characters and how that unfolds. And it was such a delight to film. This is my third movie with Marita. And it's just such a pleasure as always. And uh, I, I hope everyone enjoys it. So Melinda, I nicknamed your character Janine the Mean. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> saw that. I saw it. Hold on. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Introduce yourself. Yeah, yeah. My name is Joe Catherine. I play Kyle in the movie. Uh, I just had a really great time on set. Marie, Marita was excellent to work with. And most of my scenes were with Natalie. So I just had a lot of fun. Natalie. And um, yeah, I play uh, Angie's boss and I'm a complete narcissist. So that was a uh, <laughs> fun to uh, it was interesting because like the whole key to acting is listening. But I feel like Kyle really isn't a listener. So it was an interesting uh, thing to work on there. <laughs> yeah, you, it was a great someone, experience. I'm sorry. You were easy to not like. So that was good acting. Okay, was, thank you. <laughs> what? No, it was. It was good acting. Hi, Peter. Hello. Um, my name is Peter Mooney. Uh, I play Ted in the movie, who is uh, an aspiring uh, pilot and secret dog owner. And uh, uh, it was a, so much fun. Rita and I got to work together five years ago now, uh, and this was our this was our first chance to get back together again. And uh, I'm really excited for people to see what we got up to. 
Ted, right? You're Ted. Ted, yeah. Ted, Ted and Angie. Hi, Ted Catherine. And Angie. It's nice Hi. to see you again. I know. It's so nice to see you, too, and everybody. Um, this is me and Marita's fifth movie together, which is just crazy, but so fun. Um, I'm Catherine. I played Beth in the movie, uh, Natalie's best friend, Natalie's character's best friend. And honestly, it felt that way on set. We had so much fun. It was just like a blast, all of our scenes. So I'm so excited to see it. I'm excited to see how it turned out. We're all excited. Tim, are you here? Um, no, I don't think he can get his uh, iPad thing working. Oh, even if we had his voice, because it's his voice that's in the movie, correct, Marita? <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Um, I can maybe FaceTime with him and maybe... Okay. Let me see if I can do that. So Tim is the voice of Gil, and Gil, Gil. is the parrot. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to ring. Um, Go ahead with me, please. Yeah, they're, they're, I can hold the FaceTime to them. They're asking for you. No, no. All right. Just let me go. All right. All right. All right. We're going to well, talk about him since he's not here. Yeah. Um, we, didn't, we don't want to spoil the mystery anyway that the bird isn't actually right. talking. That's so true. that's good. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, do you want to, do you want to maybe, um, uh, well, I think that's a good recap of, of kind of the cast. And, um, I just, uh, I think it's, I just realized this, well, I realized it a long time ago, but, uh, uh Melinda and Natalie were in the Prince movie together. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of uh, a nice reunion. Um, and, and similar uh, kind of characters, like she's my nemesis in a little bit of a way, but always have a happy ending. Uh, <laughs> Yes, yeah, similar in sort of the the power dynamic, but mm -hmm. um, completely different characterization. I think you 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 stepped into a zone that's like unrecognizable from the other movie, mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's always the sign of a of a good actor is when you can't really recognize them from role to role. Um, so uh, yeah, I've worked with each of these guys. Um, you know. Uh, I thought Natalie and Peter, like when I found out that Peter was available, um, because we we had Natalie, Natalie was on board like a couple of months before we actually started. And she was kind of with me the whole um, like script development phase. And I was keeping her sort of apprised. You know, you feel a responsibility when you rope somebody into something and then you're like, oh, this is a movie about a girl and her bird. Oh, uh, no, it isn't. Um, you know, Hallmark says that we do very well with dog movies so now it's a dog movie so then I kind of pitch back to them how about a bird and a dog so that I don't have to lose the infrastructure you know of of the bird which um I mean I don't know how many movies there are out there where you bond with a bird um and this particular oh. bird was you know like a like an incredibly looking um big fat blue turquoise and, and golden yellow uh, chicken. It was quite adorable. So there, there's a lot of stories that we can, we can kind of get into as we look at the images. Um, and, and I searched for a long time for, for the correct dynamic with, um, with Natalie and with Joe's character, with Angie and Kyle, her boss. Uh, you know, we have to be very careful that if there is a past, you know, history or relationship that we don't get into any kind of trouble. So there, th that was like a little slippery slope because we, we have to make things met in, uh, fit into a modern, you know, thing without offending anybody. And yet, you know, I, it, I, I love stories that have like rich backstories and, um, uh, you know, a history. So I, I think that's, I've, this script came from Barbara uh, Kimlicka, who I've, probably done 10 of these 18 movies with and i think um she comes up she and my boss um tim johnson come up with really great you know concepts and stories and i think one of the main thing that i bring to it is like let's really dive in and make sure we have like a substantial backstory so that the actors have something to, to do and to, to, to draw from so actually by the time we get to to filming we've already talked about it we've had a read through we've we've thoroughly discussed you know where you're coming from and honestly our days just kind of fly by and they, and they have to because like we're on a three-week shooting schedule and uh um peter was making the comment earlier that like we just wrapped five minutes ago literally the first week in in august we were still filming this this has got to be the you know the fastest post-production and um kind of in a way I shot myself in the foot because I, I believe that some of the like beautiful images we were capturing on set 
and sending off was the reason that it sold and got fast tracked because people got excited about it very kind of quickly. Um, so I think that's a tribute to everybody, uh, you know, the cast and the crew. Um, I work in Ottawa, so it's like it's not as big as a place like Los Angeles or Toronto. Um, but that's the very reason that I love it. It's got so much charm and um, great little dedicated crew. Mm -hmm. And then um, like Catherine was telling and, and Catherine and, and you, Roxanne, you did the, the, um, the podcast last year for the Butterflies movie. Mm -hmm. And then after the Butterflies movie, there was um, I love in Yellowstone. I'm not sure what it eventually came out as, but uh, we did it as sort of a cowboy Western movie after that. So, you know, it's I'm very blessed to have these people uh, come back and back. So, you know what I found interesting? I had an opportunity to preview one of the cuts. I don't know if it was the final one or not, but something like all these Hallmark movies. I know that there were a lot of rules. I remember I was talking to Anna White and she was saying that the rules changed a little bit recently. She's a, a writer for Hallmark. And Catherine, you and Natalie, your, your characters have a little friendship conversation. And I was a bit surprised by some of the things that you were saying. And I was like, are they going to leave that in? And not to give away anything, but it was about, you know, your living arrangements and why um, Angie was really on this like fast track to move out do you know what i'm talking about like you were having um your boyfriend come to stay and i was like really they never do that and then there's a funny comment everybody should listen for to see if it's still in there a feather remember the conversation about a feather catherine that your character yes, i do <laughs> i was like wow that's a little spicy i know definitely <laughs> Those feathers either. <laughs> no, no. They, I think everyone's going to know what feather we're talking about. <laughs> I want, I want, if it stays in, I want the viewers, I, I'm sure it did, but I, I want the viewers to pay attention. I hope they tweet something out about it because it makes for a great, like we'll be live tweeting for you, but it makes for like a great, um, what are they called? Those gifts? Is that what they're called? You know, the little, I, I can imagine people are going to latch onto that. That was funny. Yeah, it was really funny. I remember getting that scene too and honestly thinking the same thing. I was like, wow, Hallmark. Ooh, we're getting spicy. So I like it. I hope they keep it in. Well, your your um your character was a bit on the spicy side. She I know, very, I love that, right? It's just so fun. It's different. Very zen. And um, Natalie, your character has um I see some dance moves. I, which which or is are you a dancer? Do you have any dancing background? Yeah, so like Marita said, she's so so wonderful. She kind of brought me along the whole journey. She kept me kept me updated on every, you know, aspect and script change and idea. And she was calling me all the time. And it's so rare to get that as an actor. So um, she really is just the best. Um, but yeah, we kind of. I have danced since I was three and my mom was actually a dancer and I, I danced, I did chorus line in New York and Broadway and all that stuff. So we sort of took that element of me dancing um, into the movie, um, which I was so grateful for her to put that in because I think it really is. Peter and I were talking about this the other day, but it's sort of a lot of characters sort of spreading their wings and flying and moving and never keeping their feet on the ground. And um, that's sort of very telling for her because, you know, she grew her, grew up, you know, always sort of, dancing and moving. Um, and so it was really fun to bring that in. And I'm, I'm thankful for Marita for adding that sort of story in. Yeah. Um, um, I, I, I guess um, we had a dance sequence when the first time that I worked with uh, Natalie and she, she took ballroom um, choreography lessons and did a spectacular job on um, Fit for Prince, and there was this little backstory element that her mom was a dancer and she grew up dancing. And um, then I ha then I had the conversation about, about Natalie about her in depth, you know, professional life. And I was like, I just seized on that. And um, so anything that was a dance sequence, uh, and and there ended up being like four of them in the movie, one, two, three, three or four. Um, you know, she she has a dance, a wonderful dance sequence with with Peter. And then there's two times uh, in the once in the office and once at her home where she's practicing dance. Um, so I guess that's three. So, uh, yeah, we we just kind of expand upon it. Hopefully that footage is still there in the final cut. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to start maybe the slideshow? Sure, I do. Yes, I'm going to add it now. All right. Um, just a quick little um, 
this is the city the, the, the film was done in. This is Ottawa, which is the capital of Canada. Uh, that's one of my favorite places in the whole world. Um, I've, sh I've shot scenes there, but that's like sort of centrally located. So that's Ottawa. I just wanted to place the movie. It's supposed to be Chicago um, and Ottawa is very good. So um, this is my partner, Tim and I, and we're, uh, before prep even begins, we went to a place called uh, Partners for Parrots because um, beyond the, the human element of casting, we had to cast a bird. And I started learning a lot about birds. Um, and that's, I, I, was, I was very taken in by this like rainbow macaw and um, I, I, <laughs> of interest was this blue hyacinth, but um, we couldn't get doubles on it. And I thought, well, geez, you know, just like when you work with babies, you have twins. I thought we might need a double or if we got into trouble, I needed a more common bird, but a bird that looked very good. Um, we can go to the next one. I, uh, I have a question before we go. Any of the actors, have any of you ever owned a parrot or a bird or and have any experience or was this all brand new for everyone? I mean, I've had birds, but definitely not a parrot. I had three budgies growing up, but I don't think it because I'm not afraid of birds. I love birds, but nothing, nothing of this size for sure. Catherine, you've had like every animal, I think, I that you brought home to your mama. <laughs> guilty, guilty. Oh, wow. Um, so, so this is a, a blue hyacinth and it was like um, crawling all over. So, so my takeaway from that day uh, from the lady who's an expert and had, has an aviary with 150 parrots is you have to be really careful because a bird adopts you and um, they like males. And I'm like, oh boy. Okay. So I have a female lead that, uh, you know, it's actually written in the script and I, I quickly dispense with the script. And I told people, don't worry about what the script says that the bird the bird flies here and does all this kind of stuff. We have to do what the bird is comfortable doing and we have to make sure that Natalie is safe. So when I saw a picture of this one, I, I started a, a, a search and, and it took me three and a half weeks before I, I found one. Uh, in the meantime, I knew um, Tim had told me about a museum um, in Gatineau across the river that had biplanes and I knew that I wanted to do uh, it wasn't really in the script, but I knew that I wanted to. That's the beauty of Ottawa, that there are things and you can talk people into things. Um, <laughs> you, you, you can. They're not as jaded as places like Los Angeles, where they're just so sick of filming in the streets and they're, they're, they, they basically are not user friendly. Um, people are, are kind of struck by the novelty. Um, so so I, I formed a wonderful friendship with the board of directors over at this um, Vintage Wings of Canada. Uh, and we, we got cooperation to a certain degree of um, the utilization of some of their airplanes. Like some of these airplanes appear in the movie, um, but we, everything had to be with kid gloves. So this is all part of the preliminary process. Uh, can you keep flipping? Sure. Oh, um, this course. this plane actually ends up in the movie um, and um, Vintage Wings, we're very grateful too for, for their cooperation, for allowing us on their, their property. Um, so, you know, the, the character, uh, and this actually becomes the plane that, um, is utilized, uh, for the finale of the movie. Uh, so I'm, I'm very happy about that because it adds to the beautiful production, uh, quality of the movie. And then we needed a simulator and there's me in a Boeing simulator, just like wow. this is all part of location scouting. So this is all preliminary stuff. We can get through that pretty quickly. All right. So we get to sort of the beginning of the movie where we establish um, Natalie's character, Angie, where she works and she's a workaholic and she works with her boss. And soon on in the relationship, you find out that they have sort of a dating history and there's reasons why, uh, that didn't work out and he's kind of trying to rekindle the relationship he's like at a place in his life where he's he wants to revisit things uh in yeah go in the other direction um so you know she's she's uh she's happy <laughs> she's happy to kind of take on a lot of responsibility at work and i thought um you know th this essentially is a story about a writer with a writer's block um who uh, has a friendship with her next door neighbor um, and, and he's sort of um, a pilot wannabe that hasn't passed um, his pilot, pilot's license yet. So it's like people who, who have experienced frustrations in their career. I think that's a, like a highly relatable topic. Um, and and I, thought, I thought a nice thing for, for Natalie's character was uh, she keeps taking on responsibility because as long as she's doing things at work, she's not focusing 
um, you know, she, she has this true passion, but she keeps herself um, pretty busy at work. And she works at a commercial ad agency in Chicago. Um, and if we keep going. And we can. I wanted to ask Joe a quick question. Joe, I don't know. The way they did your hair and your clothing and everything, did, was that all about the character? Did you have any say in that? Because I think it made you look more like, you know, easy to not like. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was a very uh, specific look, and uh, okay. which I appreciated. It, it it really helped me kind of get into that character. It's, it's just not at all like how I normally no. dress or anything, but no. uh, it was fun. Yeah, they they did a great job with all the wardrobe and um, yeah, styling my hair and everything. You hit upon a great topic um, because uh, wardrobe, of course, is one of the elements that like cl clearly defines character. So you know when when we when we designed Peter, we thought. Um, yes, he has the look where he's at work or coming home from work. Then there's a more slightly more casual look and we were going to put him in in jeans. And, and then we were going to create quite the contrast with Kyle. The Kyle was very, nar as he said, narcissistic and full of himself. So I, I said really tight business shirts and ties. Yeah. And he's just always like in tight clothing, but he, he tries to put on the Ritz. And um, we wanted to keep Natalie in something that was oppositional to her roommate. So here's Catherine as in her small cramped apartment. And we wanted to busy it up and make it look cluttered. So if you look at the couch, you'll see like their shoes, yep. our okay. laundry. Um, so they live together. And when Catherine's boyfriend shows up, it, it's just like double trouble because there's no room for anybody. Um, Catherine's character, we made... Um, sort of retro 60s and we had a lot of fun with that that's it's something that she carried off incredibly and with natalie we wanted to look very um attractive but business but serious you know so we wanted to 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 just keep her um it is also a summertime movie we're very conscious of like the colors um so i i would always i'd have a rule like uh, there's no red there's no purple there's no orange and you know this color palette for this character and this color palette for this character um and no patterns for this character but patterns are okay for this character so that's very well it's very well it's it's very thought thought about it's real important it is and that's why it was so easy for us to like love or not like well when it's going to be when they watch the characters because it was kind of reminded me a little bit of feeling butterflies you sort of did some, sort of the same thing it really defined the characters so we have natalie here uh and she's doing some of her moves yep um there's that whole backstory it, um, so this is this is Natalie playing her own mother. So we, these were pictures that we thought we could put in her new apartment. So we did a, a they did a photo shoot. Props department did, and created a little vignette and just beautiful. So that's Natalie. But we were like, who? They they said to me, who are we going to cast for her mom? Like look at pictures of extras. And I said, no, Natalie will play her own mom. And then we just all we need to do is cast the seven year old to look like Natalie. Perfect. So, yeah. Oh, they meet. There they are. <laughs> this is her moving into her apartment she she wins a lottery and she gets into a new condo so uh we with our locations we wanted to make sure to find something um extremely wide upscale uh you know minimalist uh fancy and just new in contrast to um sort of uh, uh beth's apartment which was cramped and sort of hippie-ish um, this is Mike Teen, um, director of photography, and he's doing something with the bird. So that's actually our bird, Biji. Uh, so there's our first glimpse of the bird. Um, this is a funny scene where um, Melinda is coming in and handing Angie the rule book. And I thought it'd be funny if she gives her a book that's like incredibly thick. <laughs> at her and go, I don't know if you got my email, but here's you know, here's, here's the rules. And he's having this conversation and the bird has already infiltrated and decided to adopt her. He flies in one day and she can't get rid of him. So she's, she's won this place at the condo and Melinda's character is explaining there are no, you know, hanging flowers outside. You'll have to remove that. And she's just completely OCD about all the rules. And she feels like it's a cost cost saving measure to not have pets. So this is like a she's taken over for her dad running the condo and uh, she wants to impress. And speaking about wardrobe, I, I said to 
I, I said to Melinda when we were designing, you know, her outfits, I said, you're an overcompensator and OCD and nothing's ever good enough. So your presentation is always like the highest high heels you could ever imagine. And always okay. like big, big, big jewelry and bling because you're always nothing's ever good enough. You never feel secure enough. So it's always presentation, presentation. Um, I think we all know people like that. Um, so it was fun that she embraced that. And here's Paul, <laughs> our very first day working with the bird. Um, you guys want to speak to what it was like, to, like to have an encounter with this bird, like in proximity to you. Um, these birds are so strong; they could like crack a macadamia mm -hmm. nut. So, like, I had, to, I was thinking, do I need to get a stunt double for for Natalie? She's like written to be so close to this creature, and it was something that I discussed for a while. It's like, do we need a stunt double? And then she's like separately in a close up, and he's separately in a close up. But as it as it turned out, these guys, they really kind of dealt with it, and they. they they never got bit. Paul, you no, said- I mean, I, I did, I lost the tip of the finger that day. Well, yeah. uh, one incident oh, wow. with the bird. Yeah, it's, I mean, you know, if you said they can crack on academic, no, I'm just joking, that was fine. The bird was, the bird was <laughs> awesome. And it was so fun because it was so unpredictable. Uh, we just never knew when BG might, you know, join in the dialogue or move somewhere new or do his little shuffle walk. So it was, it was kept us on our toes. Now, did you have a specific story that you wanted to share, Paul? Is it about the bird or? Uh, well, it's about the, it's, thanks. It's actually about the, the premise of the movie because while we were shooting this movie, kind of like what we're doing right now, my family does a Zoom every week. We play like games over Zoom and my uncle was in the middle of moving and he said, yeah, today we had to move in the cat and we had to sneak it in in a box because we didn't want the landlord to find out. And I said, you're literally describing the plot of the yes. movie I'm shooting right now. So if there's yes. a follow-up movie, Marita, you know, I want creative consultant. We can get a cat in there and. <laughs> Goodness. And and Peter and Natalie, I um, was watching your live the other day and you were commenting on often you were acting as if the animal was there, kind of like looking. And then and then they they had to later what put the animal in Marita. How was that? What was going on there? Um, say that again. I didn't understand. Sometimes they would be looking off like the dog was there or the bird was there and it really wasn't, correct? Isn't that what you were saying? Um, we, well, we usually shot the master first and uh -huh. um, the dog was easy to control. Um, <laughs> the bird would walk off like you. I would get um, I would be like, don't even put the bird in until we hit the clapper because you have 10 good seconds where he's going to be there before he starts to wander off. And there would be certain enticements, like let's put a peanut where we want him to go, but then it looks like he's eating a peanut when he's supposed to be talking to you or looking at you with goo-goo eyes. Um, so uh, it, it was it was kind of a challenge. Um, you you had 10 good seconds with him. And then the close-ups were easy. Like you would just aim to, to the bird. That would be the priorities, like get the bird before the bird loses interest and in being on the <laughs> tabletop. Um, and, and the dog would always go where he wanted him to go. And Peter got really good at like controlling him with hidden treats. Right. Yeah. I always had cut up hot dogs in my pocket. Uh, if you look really close, <laughs> you'll see I'm sometimes, uh, reaching for a treat to try and get him on his mark. But the dog Armani was, was incredible. Uh, I learned a lot about acting from him actually, uh, that I'm going to take forward, which was great, but he was, he was, uh, very easy to work with and a real, uh, set dog um bg bg could be more unpredictable well BG, what, that the the bird was never in a movie before though right that um was no i think i think he might have been um we we went through several contenders before we landed with bg i i was i was like i almost hired somebody named skittles who was an instagram star and um, but his owner had no cage, no infrastructure, was making outrageous demands, wanted his own trailer. I mean, okay. it was just like through the roof and the list just kept getting longer every day. So I said, um, well, you know, good luck. I'll, I'll follow you on Instagram. Um, <laughs> and we, we work in a low budget world. So, you know, if I if I would give them all the things that they were asking for, you know, we wouldn't have been able to feed the crew. Oh um, so, but we, we lucked out with this wonderful, um, the Wrangler, um, Catherine had a great personality and she mm -hmm. came with a dog that were in the, I guess in the same umbrella organization. So the dog and the parrot knew each other and believe me, that's a huge deal unto itself. Like you wouldn't want any dog in proximity to a bird that didn't know each other. 
So that was like, I learned a lot. That that was a huge consideration because, you know, you, you're making a movie and it's all fun and good, but you don't want anybody or any creature to be tortured or to be undergoing anxiety. Um, and you want everybody to be safe. So, you know, safety is always the most, the, the biggest consideration. Um, Peter, I saw you carrying that cage. Like that's, a, uh. <laughs> that was heavy, yes? Yes. Yeah. But I couldn't complain because Catherine would be carrying it around in between takes like it was nothing. So I had to make it look uh, light and seem seem like it was no problem. But it was very heavy. I don't know what they make bird cages out of lead or some sort of very heavy material. But yeah, it was tricky. It was it was heavy and also just shy of the width of the hallway. So um we had a few takes that it was uh, a, a lot of a lot of outtakes uh, when we were working with the birdcage. A lot of bloopers, no. <laughs> yeah, blooper city. Yeah, the but the birdcage was large. I think that's why, even though it was who knows yeah. what it's of tin more something heavier than tin, but uh, yeah, it was large. I think super that's heavy. It. Yeah, steel. I don't. I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah. Rita, I love how colorful it is. Everything, even the oh. sets, everything you do, it look, it was, it's beautiful. It looks like the bird, the color of the birds, actually. Well, yeah, thank you. Um, um, blue and gold was a very big uh, theme, and we we were very lucky to have a lot of blue sky days. I think we had rain only once, and uh, the the yellow airplane. And when I saw that yellow airplane, I just kind of went after these guys, and and we worked hard on a daily basis with the wardrobe lady. She had done the shopping for the options that fit them, but I, I would always coordinate what Natalie was wearing to what Peter was wearing to make sure it was harmonious. So the harmony of color is very important to me. And, and, and um, it's something that, uh, you know, we, I think we pulled off in a very big way. Um, this is the Vintage Wings um, volunteer crew. Um, and these guys work with this museum. And uh, the, um, on the right is Michael Veer, who, uh, is on the board of directors and he was the guy that I initially made contact with that got the ball rolling on getting permission from the owner um, who's uh, uh, a very well-known billionaire in Canada and uh, we're, we're just very grateful to these guys they they push the airplanes around and that that's constant tweaking between each and every shot you have to you know these things are made with a very delicate skin and um, or I was very grateful and these guys also worked as background players um, during our filming when we were at the tarmac so that's the that's the crew that moved the airplanes now does anybody have their pilot's license by any chance can anyone fly no just curious no just, sadly no. no that would be cool my uh, a very good friend of mine he he um is a pilot um, I was curious. His wife had to take lessons in case they're flying and they crash. She has to know how to save the plane. I'm like, oh my wow. gosh. This, yeah, no, that's pretty cool. It's, that's not my thing. So, okay, this Peter is, this isn't you flying yet. You're not yet. Ted's not yet. Or he's acting, right? That's not you as an exactly. actor. This is, this, is a, this is a commercial shoot. Although I did uh, borrow that uniform and walk onto the plane flying home. And they let me right into the cockpit and no. I was in there a good 10, 15 minutes before no. I got arrested. No, no. Oh, oh, um, but it is, it is, a, it's quite, it's quite plausible. And it was a lot of fun wearing that. Uh, something about uh, pilot's uniform makes you feel pretty, uh, pretty fancy. Yeah. Okay. Look, this guy was hilarious. Um, so th that's, um, that's Johnny Wa Ross, our, um, he's my right hand man on set. He's, uh, he's the first AD and he, he got a role in the movie <laughs> as the actor that Angie cast to begin with under right, right. Kyle's instructions. And then they were like, this guy can't act. Johnny did a, a real good job. And, uh, so it's, it's, a, it's fun with, there's a few crew people who are in the movie. Um, Greg, our, our, um, production designer played the boyfriend, uh, to Catherine and he also uh, was very comedic and it's just a lot of fun. So yeah, like, like Peter said, he's, he's playing an actor and it's always fun when it, when a competent actor plays like an actor, mm -hmm. uh, actor, it just, it's one of my favorite sequences. It's really funny. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of comedy in this. Mean Janine and Peter, is that you? No. no That's me. It? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. Yes. Yes, it is. That's you. And then Paul. All right. That's Paul coming to the rescue when yes. um, sort of the yeah. condo 
cop. Um, they, 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 they had a nickname for her and they called her the condo cop. Um, she's kind of um, just always, you know, she's obsessing about Ted and she's always in his business and she's trying to use uh, Lewis at the front desk, you know, to get inside Intel. And he's like a very unwilling pal for her. And she's always trying to like work these back channels. Um, she's but obsessing over Ted because she used to watch Rookie Blue also. <laughs> 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 Always a fan. <laughs> He's transitioned into, into trying to get his pilot's license. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, Natalie. So uh, this is you making those faces with the bird really there, right? You're not acting, and then then the the, the, the bird came later, correct? No, I believe I'm acting. I hope I'm acting. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, sorry. Go ahead. The bird wasn't there when you were making all these funny faces? Oh, no, no, the bird was actually, I thought okay. you said these are just photos of me in real life being nervous. No, the no, bird. no, the bird was there. I acted yeah. with the bird all the time. I mean, there were the moments where, you know, he would leave and I would just have to kind of keep going. But um, I was always right next to him and I always felt very safe. And, um, you know, he he had his moods and his moments. And, um, you know, there'd be, there'd be times on set where I'd be having this really intimate moment with him and then he'd like, Rah! like at me. Um <laughs> and not want to be on set and just have his moments, but he was just the most beautiful bird. And, um, he was, a, he was a blast to work with. Uh, he kept me on my toes and he's a great dancer. So people are definitely going to see that in the movie. Um, his Aww. dance moves, he, um, danced with me and Peter and he outshone us both. <laughs> There's nothing. Yeah. Better. The three of us had a, had a dancing scene together and there are two great dancers in that scene. Uh, I'll let you guys figure out who the two are. <laughs> <laughs> now the dog okay so we already know that you had a good relationship with the dog which is nice because um they don't always cooperate um if they're not pros i actually interviewed a dog for a movie um with chris mcnally and Brittany bristow and um the dog never acted before but did a wonderful job but still little funny things happen they also had special treats <laughs> they to keep the the dog in line these are your, look at that. I love the yellow dress. See, again, you got all the color coordinating again. It looks like you too. Like, look, everything just so. Mm -hmm. I look, your dress is beautiful. That, that is a dress, dress of Natalie's favorite dress. Yeah. <laughs> is that face because of that gift? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Um, that, that's, that's a, there, there's so many funny moment, moments in this. She's like, she gets talked into this. Um, she's, she's talking forever with, with Beth about, should I go? What's up with this guy? And her, her friend just goes, go bring him my ties. It's a neighborly thing to do. Knock on his door. So she comes with my ties and he's like, he doesn't let her pass the door and he just grabs the bottle and shuts it in because he's hiding a dog. Right. And, um, at a certain point it's revealed that he's hiding a dog. And then they bond on the fact that they're living in a no pets building and they're hiding animals and they they form the, the the journey of the movie is they go in cahoots to uh basically not only hide their pets but to find a proper home for this for this bird and he helps her and she helps him and it's my favorite way to to have a relationship movie the, these rom-coms is friends 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 have a have a journey where you become friends and you learn about each other's dreams and you become supportive and every movie should not end with going to the altar you know right. you have those movies that end in hey we're gonna we're gonna become even better friends and and that's that's basically what the movie's about is friendship that's nice. this is a gorgeous shot that's beautiful yeah, that's uh, that's the um, that's the Ottawa River. So you're we're on the Ontario side, and you're looking at Quebec across the way. Um, so once you once you pass that uh, boundary in the middle of the river, you're in the other province. And I am saying that that's you know Lake Michigan, and you're in Chicago. <laughs> oh, there, there you are again. I just, I mean, the place wherever you were filming is gorgeous. I mean, it's beautiful. It's um in West Westboro in Ottawa, which is a suburb just west of downtown. So actually, you can see downtown Ottawa in the back of that picture. We actually had fireworks going off one night when um, Joe and um, Natalie were doing a scene on the balcony. It's superb. Oh, look at that in your hair, Catherine. Oh, my favorite. It was the best. Did it take a while to do? Is it just clipped in? Yeah. 
yeah, they're just little clips, but they were, yeah, they were great. No, no, no hassle. Nice. Oh, this is just look together. You're together. Is this the one? Oh no. Is this yeah, one you're yeah, talking yeah, about? That's, there's literally fireworks going off. Um, in the summertime, they do fireworks like on a Saturday night and there were a few Saturdays we had to work. So yeah. And that's, um, that's Armani. Armani's playing. Um, what was the name of the dog? I'm already a few weeks away. In the movie, Zoe. Oh, Zoe, right. So there's there's Zoe and Gil, and that's like um, we, I, uh, hopefully the music is in there that's correct, but it's like dun 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 dun. <laughs> Any, anytime they had to sneak out, um, you know, they're yeah. <laughs> this is this is the heavy cage maneuver. Um, but at a certain point, they they cover it with a towel. Um, and BG loved that towel. Oh, this is a this is a series of photos to show you what typical filming was like. You had about you literally had ten seconds with BG where you wanted him on the couch so she could have a heart to heart with him, and then he's wandering all over. And that's Catherine the Wrangler trying to get him back on his mark. And actually, <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, he's um he's like here, there, he was everywhere. And <laughs> Natalie, you were so good with him. You were so good with him. And it's like, I can remember day one when he was on in front of Paul, like Paul's eyes were popping out of his head. And he's like looking at this thing with this, this big beak. And there was a moment where BG got onto, uh, Catherine was sort of putting him onto the counter from below and BG crawled onto her back and then she got kind of stuck. And she was like, like on all fours with BG on her back and we couldn't, and we're rolling camera. And I just came up with like a couch pillow and, and very gently like encouraged the parrot to go in this direction. So I learned various techniques. You have to, you, she wore big leather gloves. So you have to have something that protects you from that beak, but something that doesn't, uh, you know, hurt his feathers or right, right. You know, scare him or freak him out. You have to go slowly with like a big object and nice and soft usually works. And you can see she's wearing these big leather gloves. Yes. And there's, there's like cameras rolling and Natalie's so patient. She's doing things. She's like enticing him with peanuts and she's snapping her fingers. And Aww. I'm going to remove the, um, the slides. And um, did you, those are beautiful. Thank you for sharing them, Marita. <laughs> oh, no worries. I love taking pictures behind the scenes. Do we, um, does, if any, does anyone have any like fun stories they want to share? And we can also take some questions as we wind down. Anyone? And how, you know what? I have a question for all of you. What? What's it like when you get to see each other? Like you, you. Okay, so Catherine, who were you in a movie with before? That's here. Anyone? Or is, are you new? Um, no, I worked with Melinda, obviously, yeah. all, uh, but I have not worked with Natalie yet, or Peter, or Joseph. Uh, so that was exciting, but I mean, I feel like Natalie and I, we almost worked together a few times, um, and we've just kind of been passing by each other. And then finally, so it was nice cause we've, I've, I've heard of Natalie through friends. It's a small world. And so it was nice to find out that she was going to be there. And, um, Peter was new, but Peter and I had met previously in a, uh, workshop. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it was, that was a nice reunion. Um, and Joe, I haven't come across uh, you before, but it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was a nice reunion. And then of course, you know, crossing a paths and meeting new people. It's great. It's, I, I don't, I, I don't know. I hear when I ask this question all the time, people say it's like a little mini reunion and you feel comfortable with each other. So it makes it easier to like, just get started. Cause you, you got a lot to do in a short amount of time. How long was it again, Marita? Was it like a three week window? Was it? Um we, we shot in three weeks, yeah. um, but um, honestly, uh, this has been one of the longest preps I've ever done. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think I prepped for, uh, I, I knew about it. I wasn't like on the clock, but I was prepping for probably two months prior to shooting. And I think Natalie was on board for uh, six weeks in advance of shooting, weren't you? And speaking yeah. of prep too, Marita, remember just a couple of days before we were going to start, you lost the apartment where we were going to oh. shoot. I and lost. So you just had to put out so many fires, and you ended up finding the perfect apartment. So ended up. Almost it, it was um, <laughs> the, the size and opulence of that apartment that we landed on was better than anything. And I actually lost Angie's apartment three separate times.
Tim Higgins hockey FaceTime video. So uh, we ended up. Uh, Who's that? That's Tim. He's. Um, I got. I got Tim here. That's great because <laughs> Tim is the voice of Gil. So before I take any questions, because we're winding down, um. I didn't even, re I'm, yeah, I'm shouting, sorry, I got my teacher voice on. I didn't even realize that Tim was the voice of Gil. Marita, how did that even happen? How did, um, how did well, you Well, um, Tim, Tim's my partner, and we've been together actually since I was directing the the Prince movie with, with Natalie. So Natalie was kind of there when I was kind of starting my relationship with Tim. Um, and uh, Tim, you want to tell the story of our visit? I've shown the pictures of the aviary. He's like, no. You go, he said no. <laughs> you go ahead, dear. Uh, <laughs> um, no, people should actually hear your voice. Uh, so you should actually tell it. Like when we went to the aviary. So we're scouting for birds at the aviary. And what happened? Jeez, uh, I don't know. Um, what happened is um, these birds went on his shoulder and they were talking to him and he was talking back and I couldn't tell who was talking, the bird or, or Tim. And um, I just, I, you know, like uh, Tim, give us a demo of like, uh... All right. hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> pretty bird, pretty bird. Um, and and I, I basically have a, a video of it. And I was like, I was very concerned. Who's going to be the voice of Gil? Because we needed something that was resonant enough and and made sense. And uh, they actually never even altered anything in post production, as far as I know. Um, so you know, one one day Johnny came over with his um, uh, Johnny's like a majored in sound engineering, and we recorded all the lines, and we just put them in in post production, and it worked beautifully. So. This is the voice of Gil right here. <laughs> I love it. It's so cool. I loved it. And I didn't realize it because when I saw, I was looking at the names, I was like, hmm, who is this? Because Tim, you're really not an actor. What are you, Tim? Who, who are you, Tim? Introduce yourself. You kind of hid from us. <laughs> well, I am uh, uh, Marita's boyfriend for the last couple of years. And my background has been um, sports. So I played uh, professional hockey for uh, 11 years. And then I was in uh, the scouting department for another 20 some. So my life is basically in uh, pro sports. And I met Marita in Ottawa. We were fishing. And uh, that's how we uh, came across each other. So this is this is your, your premiere? Like you're premiering? Is this your debut? Okay. On on um, in movies? Yes, in movies. Oh yes, definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've been yeah. on television lots, but never uh, never uh, on the big screen. Right. All right. Tim yeah. is um, a legend, like a hockey legend in yes. Canada. I'm Canadian. I come from a you know Canadian family, and they all love hockey. And and Tim's a hockey legend. Very nice. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> all yes. right go i'm sorry marita go ahead because i'm gonna i'm gonna actually put up something right here and you all can see it we're gonna go in and just talk a little bit with our viewers before we we have to go because everyone's got like crazy jam-packed schedules so jan is saying do those three weeks include any days off like a sunday i always wondered that um, now, um, I, I actually, um, manipulated the schedule because, um, Tim and I had a wedding to attend. So if, uh, if I had a wedding on a Saturday, uh, you know, then we work two, other two Saturdays and we'll take off a Wednesday. So the crew would basically work five days in a week and it would, uh, we'd have off like Sunday, Monday and work Tuesday through Saturday. So yes, it's, it's, we never make the crew work six days where there's always a day off. Nice. I've always wondered. So this is just a, like Gloria's giving you a little shout out. She says she loves seeing all the work that goes into making the film, location scouting, bird scouting, and so much goes into it that we are not aware of makes me appreciate it even more. And that's true. Makes it makes us look at it a little differently. Well, thank you. Thanks, Gloria. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, 
I, I knew, I've known Ottawa for several years. I'm originally from Pennsylvania, but uh, work mostly in Vancouver and Los Angeles since I started the Ice Hotel movie in 2018. So I've, I've been slowly getting to know what a wonderful city Ottawa is. And um, Tim, actually, when I was looking for a biplane, I was, tr I was trying to go to the Science Museum on the Ontario side. And Tim said, well, do you know about the Gatineau Airport? And little things like that, like I keep my my ears and my my eyes open, but um, I, I think when you when you keep your eyes open to the possibilities, you know, um, that lead led me to my, meeting Michael Veer over at Vintage, um, and and Ottawa is just a really wonderful place, and the fact that people open up their hearts to us um, and their and give us some of their time. Uh, that we can really find these really cool locations, uh, and that's the fun of it. You know, I have a lot of sort of control when I do these little movies. Um, it's it's more control than you would get if you did like episodic in Los Angeles where you're sort of a cog in the wheel. So I, I get to have a lot of creativity and just bringing all these people together with their expertise um, it has been an incredible joy. So yeah, thank you. You're welcome. I'm saying you're welcome for her, for you, for her, for her. <laughs> Gloria said, did the birds ever do anything which made you laugh out loud of context of the scene? If so, did you leave it in and would love to know the kind um, of keep a lookout for it? Oh, she wants to know if, you know, there were any little hiccups and then you kept them because they were fun with the bird. No? Uh, yeah. Peter and uh, Natalie have a dance sequence and Peter has a line where he says, uh, look at Gil. Gil's getting into it. And we were turning the camera on and the bird wasn't doing anything <laughs> so we we basically um we the um the owner said uh you have to play like really dirty rap music uh with really risque lyrics like the more risque the better and we we did that and we boosted it up with some really like you know heavy duty rap and the bird went crazy and started dancing and that ended up in the movie oh so. my gosh not the rap music, Not though. The rap music, but um, whatever music we had, yeah. That's cute. Um, Brian wants to know, Natalie, if you're ready to adopt a parrot. I mean, I loved BG so much, but I don't think I would have time to have a parrot and a one-year-old. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I, I loved him so much, and I, I totally understand why people have uh, birds. They're so beautiful. Um, and I, I did fall in love with him. I mean, Peter and I talked about this the other day on Facebook Live with Hallmark, and mm -hmm. we both fell in love with our animals and each other's animals. Um, but I'm not ready to have a parrot. I think, I think it'd be a lot of work with the one year old. <laughs> mm, yes. Yeah. Um, Brian also wanted to know: Is three weeks typical for a Hallmark movie? We hear that a lot. Uh, yes, it's a. Um... Yes, it's uh, dictated by budget and usually 15 days is normal. Un unless you're into these special movies that they go to Africa or Paris for, then they get a little bit, you know, then they get like multi-million dollar budgets and they, they'll do like, you know, five weeks. But yeah, our, our, the normal business model is three weeks. And Jan wanted to know how many of the cast own pets? That's a good question. You have a pet? Wow. I see you too. Who doesn't have any? Only, only two. <laughs> I I did. I I but uh my 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 pet recently passed a couple of weeks ago. So oh no, I had a dog for uh 14 years, a little Yorkie, and he's just the oh, best. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, let's see, what's this one? This is um nice to see so many of who are involved in this movie. It looks fun, and I'm looking forward to watching it. And. Um, this is just a little love for Natalie from Christine. She says, nice to see you in another movie, Natalie. Love to win a princess with, with Chris McNally. Oh, thank you. I loved being a princess. Marita knows that too. I love being a princess or <laughs> prince or princess movies. I'm, I'm all there. I want a crown and everything. <laughs> we'll have to keep writing them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think, um, those are most of our comments. There's a lot of love. They're all like, we can't wait to see this. Um, there's just, oh, there's a new one here. What's this one before we wrap? Um, let's see. Oh, I didn't know this. A bird will mimic the owner's voice usually. How about that? That's ah. mm -hmm. I, 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 I suppose that's true. Um, a bird will mimic a voice? 
an oh, owner's yeah. voice usually. Tim, wow. you should give us some of the lines, like an advertisement of what some of Gil's lines were. Jeez, I can't remember. No, not on your <laughs> you Nelly. Know, it's it's funny these these poor people were like three weeks doing this movie on set, and I basically in an hour <laughs> got through all my lines and uh, <laughs> outside of struggling through uh, a couple and and having to retake them. Uh, I wasn't really involved in uh, in a lot of the movie, um, but I definitely will watch it. Because, not on your Nelly. Not yeah, on your yeah, Nelly. yeah, yeah. Pretty girl. <laughs> okay. Now, before we actually say goodbye, um, I just wanted to uh, throw it out there. Is there anyone doing something new that we should look out for that you can actually kind of tease a little bit is there a christmas movie because you know we're doing countdown to christmas soon even if it's on a different channel or something that you want us to look out for anyone i'm no. in um another hallmark one for a christmas movie oh, okay. that will be screening it was just announced yesterday um airing i believe december the 9th okay are you allowed to see the title yes it's called the most colorful time of the year oh Oh, okay. that's, a good, that's a good time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Go ahead, Natalie. Were you going to speak? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I have one, too. Um, again, by the awesome crew in Ottawa that we all work with and love. Um, it's called uh, Noel Next Door. Um, it's actually the premiere movie on Hallmark for Christmas. So Ooh. it's the first Christmas movie on uh, October 21st. So we are the first premiere of Happy Holidays Christmas at Hallmark. Yeah, it's like yeah. around the corner. Anyone yeah, else? Yeah, close. October twenty first. Wow. I yeah. know. <laughs> um, I don't know what I'm what the title will be, but I know I'm coming back to Ottawa in December to start prepping something. I just have to. Um, I I I had pitched to the guys that we do Ice Hotel Part Three, um, so I'd like to get that underway to shoot uh, January February. So I I love, of course, being there with real snow as opposed to Vancouver where we're faking snow. Um, no disrespect to Vancouver, but Ottawa's like the real deal. So I, I hope to be back there soon to make another one. Okay. And I don't want to go to LA, so I'm hoping she gets another 911. So I <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's coming she out. Wants to go to the snow and I want to go to the sun. Yeah, yeah. We're just waiting for golf season to end in Ottawa and then we'll be back. he'll be here. <laughs> So we're going to tune in tomorrow. It's 8, 7 central and PM on the Hallmark channel. And it's fly away with me. That is the hashtag. We will be how I will definitely be tweeting fly away with me. And then also it's fall into love hashtag. So is any who's on Twitter? Peter, I think you're on Twitter. Who else is on Twitter? Anybody going to Yes, lie? I'm on Twitter. Peter's okay. doing a great job tweeting. He told me yes, he doesn't tweet. Oh. Right now he's like, tweet yeah, I'm, I'm dusting off my Twitter thumbs. It's pretty good. <laughs> great. I was like um, nailing it, Peter. <laughs> and I just, I just want to tell the audience that there's going to be a very, very special ending, just a very beautiful ending to this movie that you've never seen before, and it involves antique airplanes. So tune in to see how special mm -hmm. that is. Okay. And Marita being brave. Yes. Uh, I was Natalie's stunt double. If that, if, like, obviously, it's, 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 there was no other option, you know. <laughs> I love it. Marita does everything. You're doing mm. it all. It is fantastic, <laughs> by the way. Aww. Yeah, we, we, you know, it, to, yeah. to get those planes, you know, it was a treat, I guess. Uh, yeah, it was um, one of the best things of the year was going up in that biplane. And I shot the point of views and I, I was like wearing a Natalie wig. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're all going to look for it. Okay. I know some of you have to leave, so we're going to say goodbye. This was a treat. It was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Roxanne. That was great. Thank you so much for Thanks, having us. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Enjoy. Bye, everyone. Nice seeing everyone.